This episode is brought to you by Black Butler, Parody of the Phantom Hives, a Black Butler abridged series slash parody. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Musicals based on movies have been a thing for quite a while now, but it's become a lot more noticeable in the past couple decades, mainly because instead of drawing from for an art house fair, producers have been looking at familiar mainstream titles with easy brand recognition. And the results have ranged from surprisingly good to decent for what it is to, um, really? Like everything else, the subgenre is neither inherently good or bad, it's just a matter of what you do with it. To illustrate, we're going to look at the 2007 musical Legally Blonde and talk about what it gets right and where it stumbles. The right source material, no matter what it is, is important to making a musical work, and the 2001 Reese Witherspoon Fish Out of Water comedy turns out to be a surprisingly good fit for the genre. Elle Woods is enthusiastic, charming, and has a much richer inner life than most of the other characters give her credit for, making her a very good protagonist for a musical. She's very easy to root for, which makes her more poignant moments like the title song resonate very well. Back to the sun, back to the shore, back to what I was before. Back where I'm known, back in my own very small pond. The musical also remains true to what made the film a cult classic. The story of a woman discovering her own abilities and independence while still celebrating her femininity. The values of compassion, honesty, and loyalty are strong undercurrents even in the opening number, which is basically a satire on traditional gender roles. Make him a happy home, waste not his hard earned wage, and so he does not roam. Try not to look your age. Conversely, Callahan's villain song, Blood in the Water, is in many ways a paean to toxic masculinity. Emotions and empathy are weakness, take out the competition by any means, and your only duty is to your own advancement. Wrong! This one is a win unless you're lazy. Grandma's broke, she'll have some hack from legal aid. Put her on the stand and call her old and crazy. Your guy goes free and he can even get you laid. There are also some decent character songs, particularly Paulette's Ireland, which I like because pseudo-Celtic New Age is one of my guilty pleasures, so I can relate to it. Smell the grass as a rainstorm is ending. People smile while I show past their farms. With a red-headed sailor named Brendan. And we dance without moving our arms. Where Legally Blonde struggles is where a lot of recent musicals struggle, namely leaning too heavily into the metafiction and silliness of the whole premise. Again, this is something that depends on the source material to carry it, it's pretty much inevitable for something like, say, Beetlejuice, and it does get away with it to a certain extent with things like the sexy funk theme that plays whenever Kyle the Hunky UPS guy walks around, or else Personal Essay being a literal big production number in the Harvard admissions office. I'm what you want, Harvard, I'm the girl for you, and to prove it's true, we all flew here on JetBlue, thank you! Thank you! But on the other hand, it starts pushing the ridiculousness a bit too hard as the play progresses, starting at about bend and snap. Yeah, I hear you, Paulette. Also, the number involving speculating on the metrosexual pool boy's orientation is almost certainly destined to not age well. That is the elephant in the room. Well, is it relevant to assume that a man who wears perfume is automatically radically fey? Look at his quaffed and crispy locks. Look at his silk translucent socks. There's the eternal paradox. Look what we're seeing. What are we seeing? Is he gay or European? But generally, Legally Blonde is uplifting and fun, which explains why it's had such a solid life in the regional circuit. 
and like Elle, it has something going on under its slick surface. I'm Diva, I know the score, and now, so do you.